Hi guys, and welcome back to another live stream. I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, it's a bit earlier earlier than usual. Usually I start my live streams at 3 p.m. German time, and right now it's 1 p.m. because I still have plans later. So I needed to start a bit earlier, but I hope that's still okay. And in any case, you can always watch the live streams later when I'm not live anymore. <laughs> So I'm excited for today or about today because uh, I haven't done a grammar live stream in a long time. I had a lot of guests recently. Um, I had Natalia as a guest. Jacqueline and I um, had Teresa and Laura from Let's Go German Online as guests. And then Samantha, Samantha was here um, from Richtig Deutsch Sprechen. So yeah, it was pretty exciting. And um, we had a lot of great conversations. And um, yeah, so today... We're going back to grammar. Um, tell me where you guys are based and what your level of German is so that I can get a basic idea of who is in the live stream today. So where are you based? Where are you based? That's the first question. And the second question is, what's your level of German? Yeah, so let's see who is who is here with me today. Hello, James. Schön, dass du da bist. Ich hoffe, es geht dir gut. I hope you're doing fine. So today's live stream, as I already mentioned, it's going to be a grammar live stream. It's about separable verbs. So that's a pretty basic grammar concept. So it's basically for beginners and advanced beginners. So I would say from level A1 to level beginning of level B2. So today is really for the for the beginners. Namaste aus Indian. Namaste. Hi, Akash. I hope you're doing fine. Where are you from in India? Which part of India? Where comes those Indian? Aus welchem Teil? Hallo. Guten Morgen. Naja, hier ist 13 Uhr. It's 1 p.m. So it's already past noon. <laughs> yeah, so let me know. Um, where are you based and what's your level of German? Morocco, B2. Okay, so today is going to be like an A1, A2 uh, grammar topic. So it's going to be for the beginners. But maybe you can learn a thing or two today because we're going to be covering a lot of verbs today. Captain T, Captain T is back. He's our most loyal live stream participant. We have live streams on our three channels, Lingoni German, Lingoni English, Lingoni French. And I think Captain T, Captain T has been in all of them. Hallo uh, nach Belfast, Stockholm, B1.2 oder B2.1. Okay, ich komme aus Indien, sagt Vicky. Ja, sehr schön. Tunesien, Indien. Ah, Nura, because of you, I pass. Thank you. You're welcome. Bitte schön. Es freut mich, dass ich dir helfen konnte. Ja, yeah, also heute geht es um trennbare Verben. Today we're going to talk about separable verbs. I hope you're prepared for this. Um, A2. Nafis sagt, er ist A2. Okay. Also, alle möglichen Levels sind heute dabei. So I would say we start in five minutes. I'm going to wait until people join because it always takes some time for people to join and then we're going to start. So in five minutes, we're going to get started because we have a lot to get through today because it's uh, not a very difficult topic, but it's complex. So there's there are a lot of verbs that I will be covering today and we're going to be doing a lot of examples. You can make your own examples. I will correct your examples and then, yeah, that's it. I hope you can hear me well. Ich komme aus North Carolina. Ich bin erst A1. You would say, ich bin erst A1. So, erst, what's the difference between erst and nur? Nur is like, ich habe nur 10 Euro in meinem Portemonnaie. I only have 10 Euros in my wallet. But if, but you have to say, ich bin erst A1, because after A1, there's something else. There's A2, B1, B2. So, erst A1 means you're planning on, you know, moving forward. You're planning on climbing up the level ladder, you're planning on, you know, becoming better. So erst A1. Or you could say, for example, Martin is erst in der ersten Klasse. So he's only in first grade, meaning he's going to be in other grades and more advanced grades. But right now he's only in first grade. So there's more coming. Martin is erst in der ersten Klasse. Okay. Oh, one other question. Th the third question I want to know from you is, um, how long have you been subscribed to... Lingoni German, or formerly German with Jenny. So the first question I asked is, where are you based? The second is, what's your level of German? And the third, how long have you been subscribed to Lingoni German? So let me know. 
it's always an interesting question for me because some people have, like they subscribed two months ago and others they subscribed in 2015 when I founded the channel. So it's always pretty interesting. Nura says three years, drei Jahre. Okay, cool. Hallo nach Nürnberg. <laughs> Schön, dass ihr alle da seid. Wir sind jetzt 88 Leute. Ich wohne in München und komme aus Syrien. Ich mache jetzt meinen B1 Deutschkurs. Cool, sehr schön. Seit 2018, 2019. Okay, Eduardo kennt noch German with Jenny. So, in German with Jenny existed until December 2019. And then we founded Lingoni. Zwei Jahre. Okay, Lynette ein Jahr. So, Lynette, you don't know German with Jenny anymore. Drei Monate, sagt Michael. Hussein ist B2, Level B2. Okay. Ich würde sagen, in zwei Minuten fangen wir an. We're going to start in two minutes, okay? Oh, Gamara Mohamed sagt, seit fünf Jahren. So he subscribed five years ago to German with Jenny. Hallo ihr Lieben. Ja, cool. Um, wir fangen jetzt gleich an. We're going to start now in a, in a few minutes. Today's topic is separable verbs. We're going to be talking about separable verbs. So that's a grammar topic. Pretty, um, well, it's a grammar topic for A1, A2. And uh, we're going to be covering a lot of verbs today. And even the ones who have the level B1 might still learn quite a few things today because we're going to be covering many verbs. And some of them, I'm sure you will not know. Okay, so let's get started. Separable verbs. In German, we say trennbare Verben. Trennbare Verben. The verb trennen means to separate. Okay, that's um, a verb. And a Many times in German, when you add ba, B-A-R, you can make an adjective out of a verb. So you, you know, the E-N of the verb, you delete it, and then you add ba, trennba, separable. Okay, not to separate, but separable, separable verbs. Okay? Ljubljana, da war ich schon mal. I think I was in Ljubljana three years ago. It was really, really nice. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> genau, trennbare Verben, separable verbs, Okay. What's a trennbares verb? What's a separable verb? So basically in German, you can add prefixes to a lot of verbs and the meaning of that verb changes. Okay, so let me give you a very uh, simple example. For example, fahren means to drive. Fahren, to drive. Okay, fahren. That's an infinitive. Okay, if we add the prefix zurück, Zurück is a prefix. And if we add that, it means to drive back. Zurückfahren. So, for example, let me give you an example. Am Montag fahre ich nach München und am Mittwoch fahre ich zurück. So, this means on Monday I am driving to Munich and on Wednesday I'm driving back. So right now I'm in Köln, I'm in Cologne, Germany. Am Montag fahre ich nach München, am Mittwoch fahre ich zurück. On Wednesday I'm driving back. I'm not actually doing that, that's, that's just an example, I'm staying here. <laughs> ja, genau. Um, genau, also, zurück, zurück, ich fahre zurück. Um, so zurückfahren would be the infinitive. Why do we say that it's a separable verb? It's because when we form a sentence in the present tense, then the zurück goes to the very end of that sentence. So, ich fahre zurück. So, you just conjugate fahren, and the prefix is at the end, which is zurück. Now, if you add more information to that sentence, then the zurück stays at the very end, okay? So, ich fahre morgen zurück. Oder... Ich fahre morgen mit Anna zurück. Oder ich fahre morgen mit Anna ähm, und den Hunden zurück. Okay. So we added the information morgen mit Anna und den Hunden. That information goes after fahre, the verb, and zurück is at the very end. So this is an example of a separable verb, okay? Zurückfahren. There is also abfahren. And the prefix here is ab. 
Okay. Abfahren does not mean to drive. It means to depart. And we use that verb a lot when we talk about trains. Trains departing. Zum Beispiel, der Zug fährt um 14 Uhr ab. So this means the train departs at 2 p.m. Okay, der Zug fährt um 14 Uhr ab. So we separated the verb abfahren. The ab is the prefix. We put it at the end. And then, you know, we just said whatever we wanted to say. Der Zug fährt um 14 Uhr ab. Um, I, Lucas Marcus, um, your sentence is almost correct. You have to say, nach dem Urlaub bin ich nach Köln zurückgekehrt. So it's not zurückgekehren, but zurückgekehrt. Zurückkehren is another separable verb, very good, which means to return. To return. Kehren is the main verb here, and zurückkehren, to return. Zurückkehren. Um, good question, Bel Kassem. Uh, it's written up, ab, it's written ab, like with a B, but whenever um, a word or a prefix ends in a B, it we say it like a P, up, up. The same, the same happens when a word ends in D, like der Hund, Hund, which means the dog. You don't say der Hund, but rather der Hund. Okay, there's a T at the end. Um, or it also happens when a word ends in G, der Tag. Okay, it's not der Tag, it's der Tag. So at the end of a word, when there's a B, it's pronounced like a P. When there's a G, it's pronounced like a K. And when there's a D, it's pronounced like a T. Okay. Kleiner Diskurs. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, der Zug fährt um 14 Uhr ab. Um, we, we were talking about fahren. You can also, there's also the verb wegfahren. The prefix here is weg. We have the K here again, the K sound, weg. And that means to drive away. So, er fährt, er fährt, er fährt weg. He's driving away. So the weg is at the end of the sentence. Okay? So, um, yeah. So but this is basically how separable verbs work in the present tense. We'll talk about the other tenses later, but right now I want to just talk about the present tense. Just, I don't want to overcomplicate things, okay? Okay, so I have like a huge list of verbs here that I'm not going to teach all of them to you because there's hundreds, hundreds. I'm just going to teach the most important ones, the ones that you really need to know to, um, you know, to be able to have a German conversation because I guess that's all, that's what all of you want. So we will start with the prefix up. Okay, we'll go in alphabetical order. Up is, is the prefix. Um, all right, so we already talked about abfahren. Okay, let's talk about abhauen. Abhauen. Kind of uh, used a lot in, in colloquial speech. So hauen actually means to hit something. Abhauen means to take off. So actually it means kind, it's kind of like to flee or... Not really to flee, but um, take off, but in a way that you ran away, kind of. Um, how would you say that? To to get out of a place, okay? He got out of here, as abgehauen. So, for example, um, I could be at a party, okay? And I could look at the time and, I, and I'd be like, oh, nein, es ist schon spät. Oh nein, es ist schon spät. Ich haue jetzt ab. So that means, oh no, it's late. I'm going to take off now. Ich haue jetzt ab. So that doesn't mean like I'm escaping or fleeing. It just means I'm going to take off. So that's kind of like the colloquial meaning of it. Ich haue jetzt ab. Um, yeah, abhauen in the sense of escape would be... Um, um, wenn, um, 
wenn er keinen Spaß hat, wenn er, wenn er auf Partys keinen Spaß hat, haut er immer ab. So when he doesn't have fun at parties, he always takes off. Er haut ab. Usually, um, or sometimes when you use that word, it means that you don't really say that you're going to leave. You just leave without saying anybody, telling anybody. Okay. Uh, if we use that in the past tense, we say, es abgehauen. So he took off without telling anyone, es abgehauen. Okay. Yeah. So the real meaning would be you take off without telling anybody. That's abhauen or to escape. Ja, ähm, zum Beispiel, die Polizei hat ihn gesehen, aber er ist, oder, let's, let's do it this way. The police saw him and so he took off, or, and that's why he took off. Die, Pol die, die Polizei hat ihn abge, sorry, die Polizei hat ihn gesehen und deswegen ist er abgehauen, okay? Ja. Yeah. Abholen, very good. Yes, abholen means to pick someone up. Or to pick something up. To pick someone or something up. Um, up is the prefix, as I already mentioned. Ich hole dich um 13 Uhr vom Bahnhof ab. I'm picking you up at 1 a.m., uh, sorry, 1 p.m. from the train station. Okay, I'm picking you up. Oder ich muss morgen das Paket bei der Post abholen. So tomorrow I have to pick up the package at the post office. Ja? Yeah. We're using a modal verb muss here, but we'll get to that later. Ich hole dich ab. Ähm, er holt mich morgen vom Flughafen ab. Tomorrow he's picking me up from the airport. Er holt mich morgen vom Flughafen ab. Up is the prefix, it's at the end. Okay. Okay, next verb. Next verb would be... Ah, absagen. Absagen means to cancel, like to cancel an appointment, for example. Um, sie sagt... Um, Termine immer kurzfristig ab. So that means she always cancels appointments in the last minute. So she doesn't cancel like three days in advance. She really cancels in the last minute, which is kind of annoying, right? Sie sagt Termine immer kurzfristig ab. Oder uh, ich sage meinen Zahnarzttermin ab. I am canceling my dentist appointment. Paul, yes, very good. Holst du morgen deine Eltern ab? You would need the question mark, das Fragezeichen. Are you picking up your parents tomorrow? Um, Daniel Jackson, you would, you would have to say, ich muss mein Auto abholen. Nominative case here, yeah? Yeah, you have to capitalize Schwester in Schule. Ich hole meine Schwester von der Schule ab. I'm picking up my sister from school. Mm -hmm. um, Lynette, maybe you're trying to say, wir holen dich am Freitag vom Schiphol, Schiphol, Schiphol Flughafen ab. Dich, because you cannot really pick up yourself, right? So I guess it makes more sense to say dich. Okay. Um, so. Nächstes Verb, next verb, um, before we go on to the next prefix. Mm, oh yeah, abschließen is another nice one. Abschließen means to lock, like to lock a door. Okay? Abschließen. Schließen is just to, like to close the door. Ich schließe die Tür. I am closing the door. But if you say, ich schließe die Tür ab, That means I am locking the door. So I am using a key to close the door, to lock the door, right? 
So as you can see, when you add a prefix, it changes the meaning of that sentence. It's kind of still related to the original sentence, but it changes the meaning. That's why prefixes are kind of fun to use, right? Ich schließe die Tür ab. Genau. Ablehnen is to, uh, to reject. Um, like, let's say you get a job offer uh, and you turn it down, then you can use that verb, okay? Also, to reject or to turn down. Uh, zum Beispiel, um, das, das Jobangebot gefällt mir nicht. Ich lehne den Job ab. Uh, I don't like the job offer. I'm turning down the job. Ich lehne den Job ab. Oder if it's in the past tense, ich habe den Job abgelehnt. I turn down the job. Ja? Yeah? Abgelehnt. We'll get to that later. Ja. Yeah. Anschließen ist to connect something. Um, let me try to come up with an example. Um, anschließen. Um, do you have an example with anschließen? I cannot come up with one right now. Ah, I have an example. Er schließt den Schlauch an den Wasserhahn an. So this means, um, so the prefix here is an, right? Actually, we were talking about up, but anyway. An is the prefix, so it means he's connecting the hose with the faucet. He's taking the hose and connecting it. Er schließt den Schlauch an den Wasserhahn an. Er schließt sein Handy uh, am Computer an. Mm -hmm. Genau. Ich schließe mein Telefon an den Computer an. Ja. Oder ich verbinde. You can also say, ich verbinde mein Handy mit dem Computer. That works too. Verbinden oder anschließen. Äh, ja, der Krankenpfleger, der Krankenpfleger schließt den schwerkranken Patienten an die Beatmungsmaschine an. Mhm. Beatmungsmaschine. I don't really know what that is in English. Beatmungsgerät, I guess, is the better word for it. A rest ventilator, I guess. It means, I think it means ventilator, yes. <laughs> I've been watching The Good Doctor, which is a show on Netflix, and I think they used that a couple of times. Okay, um, next verb. Um, okay, maybe we can still talk about abstellen. Another up verb, abstellen. So, um, stellen means, uh, it, it means like to put something somewhere. Also, er stellt um, das Sofa ins Wohnzimmer. So, let's say he moved and then he's taking the couch and he's putting it, he's placing it into the living room. Er stellt das Sofa ins Wohnzimmer. That it just means to place or to put it. And then abstellen is like you put an object somewhere and you leave. And maybe at some point you come back to pick it up. Like, for example, ich habe mein Fahrrad, yeah, exactly. Hier darf man sein Fahrrad abstellen. Ich habe mein Fahrrad unten an der Laterne abgestellt. So I placed my bike downstairs next to the lantern. And then I came up. And later I'm going to pick it up again and leave. Yeah? Dina Kara, kannst du mich nach Hause abholen? Um, you can say, kannst du mich von zu Hause abholen? And then the second part of the sentence, I'm not sure 
what that means exactly. So, kannst du mich von, also, ja, yeah. kannst du mich von zu Hause abholen means can you pick me up from home? Kannst du mich von zu Hause abholen? Ja, yeah, also a good example, Lucas. Sie stellt das Auto im Park ab. So, she's kind of like parking the car in the park and then going somewhere and she'll eventually pick it up. Sie stellt das Auto im Park ab, genau. Lynette, you have to say, er stellt das Auto im Park ab. Okay. Um, Milan, you would need to say, er legt das Buch auf den Tisch. Um, because a book is something that it's not going to stand upright. It's going to lie somewhere. So, er legt das Buch auf den Tisch. He's, he's laying the book onto the table. Er legt. Yeah, and then once it's lying there, you would say, das Buch liegt auf dem Tisch. Okay? Ja, yeah, genau. Uh, let's see. Another interesting one would be abbauen. Um, abbauen. So bauen is to build something, right? I think most of you will know that. It's a really simple verb. And it's also regular to build. Zum Beispiel, um, wir, bauen, wir bauen auf dem Land ein Haus. We're building a house in the countryside. Now, abbauen means, uh, well, it, it could be to, um, to mine for something, like to mine uh, for coal, right? To mine. So, um, uh, das Unternehmen baut Kohle ab. So the company is mining for coal. You cannot just say baut Kohle because you can't build coal, but you can mine it, right? Das Unternehmen baut Kohle ab. Okay. Okay, I think we talked enough about ab. Let's go and talk about an. Uh, okay, most simple one is, well, common means to come, right? So, for example, um, er, er kommt heute nicht nach Hause. This means he's not coming home today. Er kommt heute nicht nach Hause. Ankommen, if we add the prefix an to that verb, it means to arrive somewhere. Also, zum Beispiel, let's say you're taking the train in Munich and you're going to Berlin. Then you can say, ich komme um 13.30 Uhr in Berlin an. So as I explained to you guys before, an is the prefix which goes to the very end. By the way, if this is all like really, really fast for you, um, some of you may know that we also have an app and you get all of these videos inside that app. You also get exclusive videos that you cannot find publicly on YouTube. And then you can um, do exercises. You can download our worksheets. You can listen to podcasts. You can repeat exercises as many times as you want and you always get the correction. So everything that I'm telling you now, you need to kind of absorb it and practice it. It doesn't, it's not enough if you just listen to it because at some point, you know, you're not, not going to be really able to learn it if you don't practice it. So if you want to do that, you can go to de.lingoni.com and we currently have a 25% discount on the 12 months package. So uh, you can definitely get a lot of practice. And if you guys are not sure yet about really if you want to purchase the app or not, we also have a trial. Uh, and I will send you that link right now. You can also actually find it. Um, you can find the links in the description below, right? So um, uh, just a sec. <laughs> I don't have the link right now. Uh, moment. I should start saving the link somewhere on my computer. Okay, let me find it while we continue. Okay, so um, we were talking about the verb or the prefix an, right? An. So we already said common means to come. Uncommon is to arrive. Um, we also have anfangen, which means to start. And anfangen doesn't, is not, 
does not really have much to do with fangen. Fangen is to catch, like to catch a ball. Um, er fängt nie den Ball. He never catches the ball. Okay, he never catches the ball. Er fängt nie den Ball. Um, anfangen is to start. So if you have sentence in the present tense, then the an goes to the end. So for example, um, ich fange mit dem ich fange morgen mit dem Yoga Kurs an. Tomorrow I am starting with a yoga class or course. Okay, ich fange morgen mit dem Yoga Kurs an. Do you guys have another example with anfangen? <laughs> Sanchit is asking, where is my dog today? They're actually on a little mini vacation. They went without me. They're with friends, but they're coming back on Tuesday. Sie oh, another separable verb. Meine Hunde kommen am Dienstag zurück. My dogs are coming back on Tuesday. Dina Kara, I will answer your question about conjunctions later. Definitely. Do you guys have examples for me? And I found the try link. <laughs> sorry, guys. It's Sunday. I think I'm, yeah, sorry. I'm not there yet. So this is the trial link. If you want to do the, the trial before you sign up, that's the link where you can get it. Okay. So let me take a look at your examples. Ich fange pünktlich mit dem Deutschkurs an. Mit dem. So you need an article here, Basha. Ich fange pünktlich mit dem Deutschkurs an. Die Arbeit fängt um 13 Uhr an. Yes. So James, you have to write it this way. Fängt. There's an A. And Uhr needs to be capitalized. Die Arbeit fängt um 13 Uhr an. Uh, Dina, Kara, Dina Kara, I will answer that later. Your question about conjunctions, okay? Um, wir fangen bald, you have to use mit, the preposition mit here. Wir fangen bald mit unserem Kurs an. Yeah, also a nice example. Fang damit nicht schon wieder an. Don't start with that again. Like when you're having an, an argument, that would be something that you say. Like, you know, don't start and com uh, complain again that I never do the dishes or I leave my socks lying around. Don't start with that again. Fang damit nicht schon wieder an. Jenny fängt an, uh, trennbare Verben zu erklären. Better if you use erklären, not diskutieren. Diskutieren is like discussing about something. Sehr gutes Beispiel. Wir fangen morgen mit dem neuen Projekt an. Tomorrow we're starting with a new project. Super. You can also use starten, yes. Starten, but starten is, is more like when a motor, when an engine starts, ja. Yeah? Uh, der Motor startet nicht. So you cannot say, der Motor fängt nicht an. That, that's weird. Starten is more like related to technology. Okay. So, anfassen. Another one, another nice one. An, um, anfassen means to touch. Okay. Uh, fassen has a different meaning. Fassen is like to... Um, like you, you cannot comprehend something. Like for example, um, the way we use it a lot is um, was sie zieht nach Australien. Ich, das fasse ich nicht. Das fasse ich nicht. So what? She's moving to Australia. I cannot comprehend that. That's crazy. Why? Why is she leaving? Das fasse ich nicht. So comprehend, okay? And anfassen, as I said, means touch. Also, fass mein Handy nicht an. Don't touch my cell phone. Fass mein Handy nicht an. Don't touch it. Oder, er hat mein Auto... I know that's past tense. We don't want to do that yet. Er fasst immer mein Auto an. He always touches my car. Er fasst immer mein Auto an. Ah. Er hat ihren Po angefasst. He touched her butt. Not angepasst. That means he adjusted her butt. Er hat ihren Po angefasst. Nur gucken, nicht anfassen. Yes, only looking, not touching. 
Okay. <lacht> Anrufen. Rufen ist like to call someone, like using your voice. Ja? Er ruft dich schon die ganze Zeit. He has been calling you the whole time. Like he's in the basement and you're in the kitchen and he has been calling you. Anrufen means to take your phone and call someone. Ja? Ich rufe gleich meine Cousine an. Which means I am calling my cousin in a little bit. In a few minutes. Ich rufe gleich meine Cousine an. So I'm not calling her like using my voice. Well, I'm using my voice, but she's not here close. So I need to call her using my phone. Okay? Ja, fass den, fasst den Hund nicht an. Don't touch the dog. Ich rufe dich morgen an. I'm calling you tomorrow. Gut, gutes Beispiel. Ich rufe meine Mutter an. I'm calling my mother. Mm -hmm. Good question. We have, uh, actually, we have a video in our B1 playlist, I think, and in our app, of course, about the difference between anrufen and telefonieren. So I'm just going to roughly explain it. Anrufen is to call someone. So you're picking up the phone and calling someone. And the act of talking on the phone is telefonieren. Also I could say, for example, wir telefonieren jeden Tag. We talk on the phone every day. Yeah, anrufen is really the act of picking up and dialing and then calling someone. Okay. Uh, Lynette, kannst du deinen Vater anrufen? Can you, can you call your father? Ruf mich an. Call me. Ruf mich an. Okay. Chucks, I just explained the difference between telefonieren and anrufen two minutes ago. Okay? Genau. Uh, so, um, let's see. Anfassen, what else do we have? Annehmen, to accept. So, oh, for example, um, nehmen actually means to take. So, just the literal meaning to take. Um, er, oder, hier, nimm den Kaffee. So, let's say I'm at the breakfast table, am Frühstückstisch. And I say, hier, nimm den Kaffee. Here, take the coffee. Oder, äh, er nimmt seine Tabletten. He's taking his pills. Er nimmt seine Tabletten. Annehmen ist to accept. For example, ich nehme das Jobangebot an. I am accepting the job offer. Remember before we had ablehnen, to turn down or to reject. And this is annehmen. Annehmen, ablehnen. Those are opposites, right? Ahmed, the best offer is currently on our website. We have a 25% discount on the 12 months. de.lingoni.com Okay, that's the best offer currently. Um, genau. Gut. Ich nehme den Vorschlag an. Gut. Okay, let's go to the next prefix. The next prefix is auf. Okay, auf. Literally, that means on, on something. You can also use that as a preposition. Also, zum Beispiel... Uh, Um, bauen, as I, you know, I explained to you before, that bauen means to build, to build a house, to build something that you're not gonna, it's gonna be there for a long, long time, yeah? Also, um, er baut, er baut ein Haus, he's building a house. Aufbauen is more like to set up, and then probably you're gonna take that down again. Uh, zum Beispiel, um, er baut den Schrank auf. He's setting up the, the closet. So he got a new closet and he's setting it up. He's like kind of like assembling it and setting it up. Uh, oder er ist auf einer Messe und baut, uh, und baut dort uh, das Equipment auf. 
Yeah. So he's at a trade fair and he's setting up the equipment. Genau. Oder er baut den Stand auf. Er baut den Messestand auf. Um, Messestand is, um, is the, the exhibition stand, the stand that you can find at a trade fair. So they're going to take that down again. It's not going to be there forever. So that's why it's much better to use aufbauen and not just bauen. Sie bauen die Möbel auf, genau. Ich baue mein Zelt ab, very good. I'm like taking down the, the, the tent. So abbauen is the opposite of aufbauen. Abbauen is like kind of like to, oh, we had that before. We said to mine, but it also means to like dismantle something or to, um, yeah, I guess that's the best verb I can find, the best translation. Auch ein gutes Beispiel. Könntest du kurz auf meinen Hund aufpassen? Could you watch my dog for a little bit? Aufpassen is to watch. Uh, so, passen is to fit. So, for example, I could say, um, der Pullover passt dir nicht. So, the shirt or the sweater doesn't fit you. It doesn't fit you. Der Pullover passt dir nicht. Oder, passen dir die Socken? Do the socks fit you? Okay. Aufpassen has a different meaning. Aufpassen is to watch like a dog or a child or a senior citizen. Okay. Zum Beispiel, ich passe heute auf meine, äh, nicht, äh, auf, meine, auf meine Nichten auf. I am watching my nieces today. So I'm watching them, I'm babysitting them while their parents go somewhere else. Okay? Oder ähm, ich oder er passt dieses Wochenende auf meinen Hund auf. He's watching my dog this weekend. Or This is actually a true statement. Sascha und Julia passen dieses Wochenende auf Snoopy und Minou auf. Deswegen sind Snoopy und Minou nicht hier. Normalerweise sind sie hier, aber dieses Wochenende nicht. Pass auf dich auf. That's also a very nice sentence. So it means uh, take care, like, you know, um, be safe. Make sure that nothing happens to you. Pass auf dich auf. So this is when, when you like say goodbye to a friend, for example, you know, you spend some hours together and then you say goodbye and then you say pass auf dich auf. Ne? So make sure that nothing happens to you. Take care of yourself. Fabio, I don't have a PDF book about separable verbs, but we have a ton of exercises on separable verbs um, on in our app, right? If you, you can um, try out the trial, The link is in the description below. You can just see if you like it. And then um, if you like it, you can sign up and get a ton of exercises on verbs, separable verbs, inseparable verbs, all kinds of verbs, and a lot of grammar stuff. Okay. Um, so. Okay. So, auf. Oh, yeah. Another nice one is aufhören. So, hören is to hear, right? To hear with your ears, using your ears. I could say, for example, ich höre nichts. I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. Maybe it's my ears or maybe something is not working on my laptop. Ich höre nichts. Aufhören is to stop. So I could say, hör auf damit. Stop that. Literally, that means stop with that. Hör auf damit. Oder, er hört nicht auf. He's not stopping. He's not Stopping what he's doing and he's supposed to like making noise or making noise that I don't like. Er hört nicht auf damit. Um, oder. Wir diskutieren schon seit Stunden, aber wir hören jetzt auf. So we've, bis, we've been discussing for hours, but now we're, we're stopping, we're quitting. Ja, das ist auch ein guter Satz. Morgen höre ich mit dem Rauchen auf. Tomorrow I'm gonna quit smoking. Mhm. Danke, Paul. Bis später. Tschö. So. Oh, another one would be aufräumen. Aufräumen means to clean up. So, ich 
räume sonntags immer meine Wohnung auf. So that means on Sundays I always clean up my apartment. Ich räume sonntags immer meine Wohnung auf. Thanks for the feedback. Um, yeah. Mohammed, I think is your name, right? You you are using our paid subscription and you say it's helpful if some if you want to practice consistently. Cool. Thanks for the feedback. Mm, genau, aufräumen oder mm, Sie räumt nie ihr Zimmer auf. That's what my mom always used to say about me. Sie räumt nie ihr Zimmer auf. She never cleans up her room. Yeah. Oh, another nice one is Aufstehen versus stehen. So stehen means to stand. Zum Beispiel. Er steht am Fenster. He's standing by the window. Aufstehen means to get up. So you're like sitting down or lying in bed and then aufstehen. So up, aufstehen can be you're getting up in the morning or it can be you're getting up from your chair. You're, you've ate lunch, you've eaten lunch and then after that you get up. Also Let me give you two different examples. Um, ich stehe immer um 6.30 Uhr auf. I always get up at 6.30. So now I'm talking about the morning. Oder let's say we're sitting at the, at the lunch table. Um, ich, uh, ich bin fertig. Ich stehe jetzt auf. I am done. I'm getting up now. Okay, ich habe fertig gegessen. Oder ich habe aufgegessen, you can say. Sometimes. Ich habe aufgegessen, ja. So I ate up, I ate everything, I finished my food. Ich stehe jetzt auf, okay? Yes, this is also a nice um, example. This is in the past tense, in Präteritum. I hope you guys can still hear me because it's, uh, apparently I have connection problems. Okay, er stand auf und bot dem Mann seinen Platz an. So he got up. And offered uh, his seat to the man, an older man, for example. Okay? Ja. Yeah. Uh, nein, ich stehe nicht um 5 Uhr auf. Ich stehe ungefähr um 7 Uhr auf jeden Tag. Ungefähr. I always get up at 7, more or less. Genau. So, uh, weiter. Oh ja, yeah, aufwachen. Aufwachen means to wake up. Aufwachen. So not getting up, but waking up, like the process of opening your eyes, yeah? Also, um, manchmal spielt mein Nachbar nachts Schlagzeug und dann wache ich immer auf, which is, I guess, not a surprise, right? Sometimes my neighbor plays uh, the drums at night and then I always wake up. Und dann wache ich immer auf, aufwachen. Hi in die Ukraine. So. Aufwachen. Oh ja, yeah, aufmachen is another nice one. Machen is to make. That's pretty, um, pretty easy, right? Zum Beispiel, ich mache einen Salat. Oh, Salat. Äh, nächste Woche Sam oder nächste Woche Freitag muss ich Salate machen, weil ich am Samstag meinen Geburtstag feiere. Nächste Woche Samstag. Und da muss ich viele Salate machen. Genau, ich mache einen Salat oder ich mache einen Handstand, I'm doing a handstand. Oder ich mache jetzt Feierabend, which means I'm gonna finish for the day. It means like you stop working and you go enjoy your free time. Uh, aufmachen means to, but this doesn't have much to do with machen. Aufmachen is to open, just means to open. Zum Beispiel, sie macht die Tür nicht auf. Uh, Khalil, ich habe am 31. My birthday is on uh, May 31st, but I'm celebrating later. So, 31. Mai ist mein Geburtstag, ja? Yeah? <laughs> genau, also, sie macht die Tür nicht auf. She's not opening the door. Okay. Gutes Beispiel. Um wie viel Uhr macht der Supermarkt auf? What time does the supermarket open? Gut. 
But I don't do private lessons right now. I just do these live streams and then we have the app. You can find the link below if you want to try it out. Ich mache die Tür auf. I'm opening the door. Genau. Okay, I think we talked enough. Oh, my throat is starting to hurt. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get through all of this today. Um, yeah, it's a bit easier when my sister's in the live streams because then we can kind of like share the talking. Anyway, I'll try to get through this. Um, yeah, also. Oh, yeah. Another nice one is lachen, to laugh. Lachen is to laugh. Auslachen has a different meaning. Auslachen means to laugh at someone. And it's a mean way. It's it's mean, right? You're laughing at him because he's doing he's being weird, so you're laughing at him. Yeah. Also, um er lacht mich immer aus. He always laughs at me. Er lacht mich immer aus. So that's mean. Lachen is just to laugh. Neutral. Neutral way of, yeah, no mean. There's no, like, it's not necessarily mean. Lachen. Um, oh, yeah. Atmen versus ausatmen. Atmen is to breathe. Also, um, uh, unter Wasser kann man nicht atmen. You cannot breathe underwater. Ausatmen. Ausatmen means to to exhale. To exhale. Okay? To exhale. Also, like for example, when you need to relax, when you tell people to re relax, you can tell them, einatmen, ausatmen. Einatmen, ausatmen. Okay? Einatmen, ausatmen. Also, ich atme ein, I'm inhaling, ich atme aus, I'm exhale, exhaling, exhaling, oh God, I have trouble saying that, exhaling, <laughs> um, genau, einatmen, ausatmen. Okay. Okay, another one is füllen versus ausfüllen. Füllen means to fill. Um, zum Beispiel. Uh, er füllt. Er füllt das Planschbecken mit Wasser. He's filling the little planschbecken. Um, the little pool. Planschbecken is like a kiddie pool, pool for kids, right? Er füllt das Planschbecken mit Wasser. He's, oh, Wasser, of course, has just two S's. So he's filling the pool with water. Ausfüllen is when you fill in a form, like for the authorities, right? Ich fülle das Formular aus. I am filling in the form. Okay. Genau. Ah, another nice one would be aussteigen, which means to get out of a vehicle. Also, ich steige jetzt aus. I am getting, I'm getting out now. I'm getting out of the car. Ich steige jetzt aus. The opposite would be einsteigen. Ich steige jetzt ein. You can say that for trains, for buses, for cars. Yeah. Basically, vehicles with, with wheels. With wheels. <laughs> But you don't say that for bikes. For bikes, you say auf, uh, aufsteigen. Yeah. Steig auf und fahr los. So get, get on your bike and drive and start, and start uh, riding. Yeah. Or you can also just say steigen. Ich steige auf mein Fahrrad. I'm getting on my bike. Okay. Yeah. So. Ausmachen means to switch off. 
like when you are um, talking about lights, for example. Also, abends mache ich das Licht aus. So at night, I'm switching off or I'm switching off the light. Okay, abends mache ich das Licht aus. Okay, I think we can go on to the next prefix, which is ein. Ein is another prefix. Okay. Okay, we have arbeiten, which means to work. I guess that's pretty obvious. Yeah. Ich arbeite jeden Tag. I work every day. Ich arbeite jeden Tag. Einarbeiten has a different meaning. Like when someone is new in your company and you kind of have to um, train them, you can use that verb. Also zum Beispiel, ich arbeite diese Woche die Praktikantin ein. So that means this week I am training the, the intern, the female intern. That's Praktikantin. Yeah? Um, oder sie arbeitet mich ein. She's training me so that I can eventually do my job. Yeah? So. Um, einbrechen means to break in. Einbrechen. Uh, brechen is to break. Zum Beispiel. Uh, er, oh, it also means throw up. <laughs> uh, er, er bricht sich das Bein. But that doesn't really make sense in the present tense because it, we usually talk about it when it already happened. I guess it makes sense to introduce the perfect tense to you right now. Um, the separable verbs, when we use them in the past tense, we don't separate them anymore, but something else happens that's kind of weird. Er hat sich das Bein gebrochen. Oh, no, sorry. No, that's, um, wait. That's, well, I can still explain that sentence to you. Er hat sich das Bein gebrochen. He broke his leg, right? We have the gebrochen. Hat is the helping verb. Gebrochen is the past participle. Er hat sich das Bein gebrochen. He broke his leg. Yeah. Um, genau. Um, einbrechen is to break in. Like a burglar broke into your house. In that case, you would say, er ist in mein Haus eingebrochen. So do you see what happens here? Uh, we have the infinitive, einbrechen. And now when we use it in the past tense, you have to add the GE in the middle. And this, that's what it becomes. Eingebrochen instead of einbrechen. The E changes to an O. Eingebrochen. Oder anfassen, angefasst. So. Er hat mich angefasst. He touched me. Uh, sie hat das Licht angemacht. She turned on the light. Oder er hat das Licht ausgemacht. He turned off the light. Uh, Khalil, you have to say, der Dieb ist in das Haus eingebrochen. You have to use the preposition in, okay? Yeah. Oder, another past tense one. Um, Wir haben angefangen. I'm writing it this way, but of course, the way you have to write it is this way. Wir haben angefangen. We have started, right? We have, wir haben, I can use that now in our context. Wir haben vor einer Stunde angefangen. We started with this live stream an hour ago. Also, wir haben mit dem live stream vor einer Stunde angefangen. Ja? Yeah? Samuel, äh, du musst sagen, meine Eltern, meine Eltern kommen morgen, deswegen muss ich die Wohnung aufräumen. Ja? Gutes Beispiel. Ich bin bei der Arbeit eingeschlafen. 
Es hat angefangen zu regnen. I wouldn't put a comma there because we just have two words after the comma here. Zu regnen. Es hat angefangen zu regnen. Genau. Wir haben mit dem Unterricht angefangen. Ja, gut. So now you know how to use separable verbs in the past tense. Pretty easy, right? Um, einsteigen to get into a vehicle. We, we talked about aussteigen. Er ist aus dem Auto ausgestiegen. Here you notice that we have the GE in the middle again. Ausgestiegen. He got out of the car. The opposite would be getting into the car. Er ist ins Auto eingestiegen. He got into the car. Okay. It's so nice once you guys know the past tense because then I can just make much more examples. It's just really, really helpful in German to know the presence and the perfect to have a simple conversation. All the other tenses, they're also important, but basically presence and perfect are the most important ones. So definitely make sure to, to master those, to really learn those. Um, so. Einladen, another one. Er hat mich, ein, well, the infinitive is einladen, which means to invite, to invite a person to your party, for example. Uh, ich habe 15 Leute zu meinem Geburtstag eingeladen. That's actually a true statement. <laughs> I invited 15 people to my party. Ich habe 15 Leute zu meinem Geburtstag eingeladen. Okay. I have talked a lot this past hour. So now I would like to ask you guys to make some examples using ab, an, auf, ein. I think those are the four that we talked about. Ab, an, auf, aus, ein. Ab, an, aus, auf, ein. So these are the prefixes that we have talked about in the last hour. So now it's your turn to make some ex some sentences using those in the present tense and in the perfect tense. Ha, Vinda, you have to say, ich habe sie zu meinem Geburtstag eingeladen. You forgot the GE, eingeladen. An accusative. Ich habe sie zu meinem Geburtstag eingeladen. Satak. Ich habe ihre Vorlesung angesehen. I listened to your, um, I watched your lecture. Time more, um, it's correct if you say, ich fahre, well, ich fahre mit meinem Auto ab. Abfahren is just used a lot for trains. Uh, I guess if you want to say you're leaving, you're leaving the place where you were at right now, you would just say, ich fahre los. That's the most common way to say it. Ich fahre los. Yeah. Ich habe schon eingekauft. I already went shopping. Super. More examples. Mehr Beispiele, bitte. Gutes Beispiel. Ich lade dich zum Essen ein. Cool. Ich lade dich zum Essen ein. I am inviting you to go eat with me. Okay. Gut, gutes Beispiel. Ich habe mich schon in der neuen Stadt eingelebt. I already, you know, became familiar with the city. Sich einleben. Leben is to live. And sich einleben is to settle in. You have settled in into the new, in the new city. Um, Lucas, you would have to say, das Flugzeug, not der, das Flugzeug fliegt in 15 Minuten ab. Actually, it flipped up. Hipped up is better. <laughs> flipped up is flipped up. I, that's also correct, but it's more common to say that Flugzeug hebt in 15 Minuten up. It's taking off in 15 minutes. Time war, um, mein Urlaub hat angefangen is the better way to put it. Oh, es regnet. Tasse Regen. Mein Urlaub hat angefangen. My vacation has started. Perfekter Satz, Marlon. Super. 
Der Zug nach Berlin fährt um 16.30 Uhr ab. Super, sehr, sehr gut. Gutes Beispiel. Kannst du rechts abbiegen? Can you turn right in your car? Oh, auch ein super gutes Beispiel. Ich bin in die Bank gegangen, um Geld abzuheben. I went into the bank to, um, to get money, to retrieve money. Ich kaufe eine Banane ein oder ich kaufe morgen etwas ein. Ja, ich stehe um 7 Uhr auf. Ja, morgen has to be lowercase m here. When you buy one single object, um, you would just say, ich kaufe eine Banane. It's not very common to say, ich kaufe eine Banane ein. Einkaufen is just generally used for shopping. Zum Beispiel, wir gehen morgen einkaufen. We're going shopping tomorrow. By the way, we haven't really talked about uh, modal verbs and Futur 1 using separable verbs. But, but that's really, really easy. It's much easier than the perfect tense. So if I use modal verbs or the Futur 1, then we just use the infinitive. Zum Beispiel, ich muss einkaufen. I have to go shopping. Ich muss das Licht ausmachen. I have to turn off the light or switch off the light. Um, wir können wir können uh, wir können einsteigen we can get in we can get into the car um, wir werden ihn nicht auslachen we will not laugh at him okay so you have werden in the modal verb and then the infinitive goes to the very end of that sentence wir müssen, I'm, I'm correcting your sentence here, Engine A. Wir müssen uns beeilen, weil der Zug gleich abfährt. Okay. Wir müssen uns beeilen, weil der Zug gleich abfährt. I will talk to you about conjunctions a little later today. Er hat 10 Euro im Supermarkt ausgegeben. Sascha, ich bin vor 15 Minuten aufgestanden. I got up 15 minutes ago. Vor, which means ago here. Okay. So. Okay, let's, let's go on and let's take a look at the next one. Um, um, we have a lot with hair. Herkommen means to come here. Kommen just means to come. Also ich, ich kann morgen nicht kommen. I can't come tomorrow. Ich kann morgen nicht kommen. Uh, I can ask you, wann kommst du morgen? When are you coming tomorrow? Oder wann kommst du morgen her? Which is actually the same meaning. So when are you coming or when are you coming here tomorrow? Both is correct. Oder if, if in German I ask you, wo kommst du her? This can also refer to your home country. Your, the answer would be then, ich komme aus, ich komme aus Bulgarien. Um, ich komm, er, kommt aus, er kommt aus Deutschland. Um, sie kommt aus der Ukraine. Um, wir kommen aus Schweden. Okay. Come from a place. Komm jetzt her. Come here now. I say that to my dogs a lot. Komm jetzt her. Wo kommst du her? Where are you from? Standard phrase, yes. Good, yes, good comment. It doesn't matter if you say, woher kommst du oder wo kommst du her? Same meaning. Exactly the same meaning. Paul, kommst du bitte her? Paul, can you please come here? Mm -hmm. Hierher or her, there's no, there's no, really no difference. Wann kommst du hierher oder wann kommst du her? Same difference. Okay, sorry. Oh, um, so. Mm. 
Okay, we also have the prefix herauf, which in the spoken language is often just rauf. Most of the time we just say rauf. Also, let's say I am in the in the living room and um, someone is uh, upstairs and they're asking me, Jenny, wann kommst du rauf? So Jenny, when are you coming up? They, I mean, the high German way would be wann kommst du herauf? But it just sounds so formal that hardly anyone ever says that. So Jenny, wann kommst du rauf? Or the opposite, Jenny, wann kommst du runter? When are you coming downstairs? So runter is the short version of herunter. But hard, hard, hardly anyone says herunter, we just say runter. Wann kommst du rauf? Wann kommst du runter? Genau. Uh, wann kommst du herein? When are you coming in? Like, I'm in my office and I'm asking, wann kommst du rein? Wann kommst du rein? When are you coming in? Oder wann kommst du raus? When are you coming out? Oh, of course, it's wann, not wann, with one in. Genau. Yeah, uh, or um, let's say I'm waiting for my neighbor to come here. Uh, oh, and I'm calling her and saying, Wann kommst du rüber? When are you coming over? Herüber is the high German way and rüber is just, you know, the everyday way. Very good. Komm sofort herunter. Or the colloquial way, komm sofort runter. Come downstairs right now. Komm sofort runter. Hmm? Did I already talk about hin? No, I don't think so. Hin is another prefix that is used a lot in German. Oh, I'm going to have a sore throat after this live stream. Um, okay. Fallen means to fall. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember the live stream about German adverbs where Minu fell on the table. Minu ist auf den Tisch gefallen. She fell on the table, but nothing happened to her. She's fine. We know it's often tisch gefallen. Hinfallen means to fall down. So kind of like you're walking and then you're falling down. You're tripping and falling. Also er ist gestolpert und hingefallen. He tripped and fell. Hingefallen. Let's say um, we're looking, I don't know, we're walking and then I like see a deer in the forest and I would say like, oh, guck mal dahin, guck mal dahin. Or guck mal, uh, or I can also just say guck mal da oder guck mal dahin. That's not a, an example with hin, hin though. <laughs> um, yeah. Hinlegen. Um, er legt das Buch auf den Tisch. Past tense would be, er hat das Buch auf den Tisch gelegt. Another way to say it would be, er hat das Buch auf den Tisch hingelegt. Same difference. Doesn't matter if you say one or the other. It's the same thing. Hin is more like ch showing a direction. He's putting it somewhere. If I ask you, where did you put the book? I could say, wo hast du das Buch hingelegt? Where did you put the book? Or if it's a standing object, wo hast du den Stuhl hingestellt? Where did you put the, the, the chair? Harvinder, it makes more sense if you say, sie ist gerannt und hingefallen. She ran and fell down. Hinsetzen, sit down. Uh, I could say setz dich, if it's informal, or setzen Sie sich, which means sit down. But I could also say setz dich hin, or setzen Sie sich hin. Okay, doesn't really make a difference if you say one or the other. 
Oder wo kann ich mich hinsetzen? Where I can sit down? Okay. Wo kann ich mich hinsetzen? John Fran, ich bin müde, ich lege mich hin. Yes, I'm tired, I am lying down. Okay. Okay, another um, important prefix is los, which kind of has the meaning of going somewhere. Okay, los. Also, um, a very, very common um, verb we use in German is losfahren, which means like to leave. Also, beeil dich, wir fahren gleich los. Beeil dich, wir fahren gleich los. So, hurry up, we're leaving soon. Beeil dich, wir fahren gleich los. Oder... Wann müssen wir losfahren? When do we have to leave? Okay, something else I need to explain to you is um, what happens when we use conjunctions like weil or das. Oops, sorry. Weil or das. What happens when we use these kinds of conjunctions? Um, so I explained to you that when you, when you conjugate a separable verb, it can look like this. Er denkt, ups, er ähm, Moment, er setzt sich hin, he's sitting down, right, the hin is the prefix here, now if I use a conjunction like das, this is what happens, er Er ist nervös. Ein Moment. I have to think of an example now. Ein <laughs> Moment. Ähm. Um. My brain is not working right now. Uh, uh, sie ist traurig, weil sie sich nicht hinsetzt. I don't know, it doesn't really make much sense, but just so that you get the, the how it works. So she's sad because her aunt is not sitting down. So here we the hinsetz is together again because we're using the conjunction weil in a subordinate clause. Sie ist traurig, weil ihre Tante sich nicht hinsetzt. So you wouldn't say sie ist traurig, weil ihre Tante sich nicht setzt hin. That doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> um, let me give you another example. Ich bin sauer, weil er nicht das Licht ausmacht. So I am mad, uh, that's a better example. I am mad because he's not turning off the light. So er macht das Licht aus. When it's used in a main clause, you separate the prefix from the main verb and the aus is at the end. But when you have a subordinate clause, like in this example, The Ausmacht comes back together. Ich bin sauer, weil er nicht das Licht ausmacht. Oder Ich bin schockiert, weil er dich immer auslacht. I'm shocked because he always laughs at you. Ja. Ähm, wir sind traurig, weil er nicht mitkommt. We're sad because he's not coming with us. Yeah. Oops. Um. Mm. Nachmachen is to imitate, by the way. 
Ach, machen. Also, ich bin verärgert, weil sie mir alles nachmacht. So, I am mad because she's like, she's copying me all the time. Ich bin verärgert, weil sie mir alles nachmacht. Nach is another prefix. Nachdenken, by the way, is another very important verb, which means to think, to think about something. So, ich denke über meine Zukunft nach. I am thinking about my future. Past tense. Hast du über deine Zukunft nachgedacht? Did you think, have you thought about your future? Uh, Lucas, um, your sentence would be, sie ist traurig, weil ihre Ehe kaputt ist. But that's not really a separable verb here. Ich setze mich an den Tisch, weil ich das Essen verzehren muss. Verzehren is a very formal way to say eat. Weil ich krank bin, kann ich nicht arbeiten. Good example, but it's also doesn't involve a separable verb, right? Also a good example, but doesn't involve a separable verb. Ich bin traurig, weil meine Familie weit weg ist. Um, that would be, John Friend, that would be abschreiben. Darf ich deine Hausaufgaben abschreiben? Can I copy your homework? Okay. Another prefix, which is used a lot, is for. Another separable phrase, prefix. Okay. For example, vorhaben, which means to have plans or to plan. So I could say, was hast du am Wochenende vor? So what have you planned this weekend? Was hast du am Wochenende vor? And then you could say, hm, ich habe nichts vor. Ich werde mich ausruhen. So I haven't planned anything. I will, I will rest. We'll get some rest. Okay. Oder vorlesen, to read something to your children. Um, er liest abends seinen Kindern immer etwas vor. He's always reading to his children at night. Vorschlagen to suggest. Very good. Er hat mir... Uh, Um, er hat mir vorgeschlagen, äh, abends zu ihm zu kommen. He suggested to come to him at night. Ich habe vor, mit meiner Familie Zeit zu verbringen. Ich schlage euch eine Uhrzeit vor. I'm suggesting a time to you. Okay, let's say we're discussing about a time and then I I'm suggesting that time. Good example. Was schlägst du vor? What are you suggesting? Yeah. Genau. Vorbei. For example, vorbeigehen. So let's say you're in a crowd and so you see someone pass, like walking by you and you're like, oh, I know that guy. So you would say, er ist an mir vorbeigegangen, aber er hat mich nicht erkannt. So he walked past me, but he didn't recognize me. Michelle, you can either say, hast du Pläne oder hast du etwas vor? But you cannot combine the two. Gutes Beispiel. Ich lese meinem Neffen eine Geschichte vor. Genau. We're going to do a quiz pretty soon. So I hope you paid attention. So the last two prefixes we're going to talk about is weg und zu. Weg. I think we talked about weg once in this live stream. Zum Beispiel. Um, weglaufen. To run away. 
Er ist weggelaufen, weil die Polizei ge gekommen ist. He ran away because the police came. Er ist weggelaufen, weil die Polizei gekommen ist. Oder man soll nicht weggucken, wenn, wenn jemand auf der Straße verprügelt wird. So you shouldn't look away when someone is being beaten up in the street. Bell, you have to say, ich kenne den Mann, der an mir vorbeigegangen ist. I know the man who, who walked past me. Okay. And then the last, well, yeah, so wegwerfen is another one, which means to throw away. Also. Wo, wo ist mein blaues Hemd? A guy could say that. Wo ist mein blaues Hemd? And I could say, oh, tut mir leid, das habe ich weggeworfen. Das habe ich weggeworfen. I, I'm sorry, I threw that away. <laughs> Another good example. Die, kind, die Kinder liefen vor dem Hund weg. The children ran away from the dog. Ich bereite eine Party vor. I'm preparing a party. Zu is the last um, prefix we're going to talk about today. Zu. Okay. Zustimmen. It's already pretty advanced. Er stimmt mir zu. That means he agrees with me. Er stimmt mir zu. Um, Er hat mir zugewinkt. He, um, it doesn't mean to wink. It means to wave. He waved at me. Er hat mir zugewinkt. Sorry. Um, zugewunken. <laughs> Have you ever heard of that verb? Zugewinkt. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that, but it's correct. <laughs> Sie fahren von Berlin weg. They're driving away from Berlin. Stimmen and zustimmen does not have the same meaning, no. Stimmen, you can use that for the for the piano. Ich stimme das Klavier. Not really a very musical person, but yeah. To tune, I guess it means, yeah, to tune. Yeah. Um, zugewinkt, um, to wave at someone. Zuwinken, to wave at someone. Doesn't mean to wink, it means to wave. Like if I just say, er winkt, it means he's waving. Er winkt mir zu, he's waving at me. So it's directed at me. Okay. Genau. Uh, all right. So let's maybe cover just a few more verbs. Uh, to smile at someone would be zu lächeln. Also, sie lächelt mir immer zu. She always smiles at me. Sie lächelt mir immer zu. Um, sie ist auf mich zugelaufen. She ran toward me. Sie ist auf mich zugelaufen. Um, uh, 
<lacht> Another funny one is zulegen, which means to put on weight. Er hat ganz schön zugelegt. He gained quite some weight. Er hat ganz schön zugelegt. Mm, yeah. Okay, guys, I think it's ready for a quiz. Are you guys ready for a quiz? I'm going to ask you 15 questions and I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you 15 English sentences and you have to translate them into German. Okay. The first one is Sabrina turned off the lights. What does that mean in German? Sabrina turned off the lights. It's past tense. It's a bit more tricky. <laughs> Not zugemacht. Zumachen would be to close. You could say, for example, Sabrina hat um, den Koffer zugemacht. Sa Sa Sabrina closed uh, the suitcase. Ja, genau, genau. Francisco, sehr gut. Sabrina hat das Licht ausgeschaltet or alternatively you can say ausgemacht. Both of those work. Sabrina hat das Licht ausgeschaltet. Sabrina hat das Licht ausgemacht. Second example. Hmm. He smiles He smiled at me. This is a bit tricky. But we talked about that like five minutes ago. Yes, that would in the present tense. Yes, almost correct. Er lächelt mir zu. Yes. But what about in the past tense? Past tense. Uh, yeah. Marlon, super. Er hat mir zugelächelt. Super. Sehr, sehr gut. Okay. Das nächste Beispiel. Um, We are starting with the live stream. Was bedeutet das auf Deutsch? We're starting with the live stream. Mm. Noch nicht ganz. Wir fangen is correct. Okay, live stream is one word in German. So, wir fangen mit dem live stream an. This is the present tense, right? Wir fangen mit dem live stream an. Mit dem, right? Mit dem live stream. You should also check out my other live streams on dative and accusative because I see quite a few of you making mistakes using the dative and the accusative case. Ja, genau richtig. Wir fangen mit dem Livestream an. I finally have one correct answer. Super. Okay, Nummer vier. Nummer vier, nächstes Beispiel. Um, the train leaves at 3 p.m. Wie sagt man das auf Deutsch? Train leaves at 3 p.m. Ja, super. Marlon, super. Der Zug fährt um 15 Uhr ab. Sehr gut. Sehr, sehr gut. Okay. 
Nummer 5. Ähm. Are you, there's a lot of different answers for this. Are you coming upstairs? Are you coming upstairs? Wie sagt man das? 3 p.m. would be 15 Uhr. No? Super, ein sehr gutes Beispiel. Kommst du rauf? Are you coming upstairs? Kommst du rauf? Genau, super. Kommst du rauf? Kommst du die Treppe hoch? That works, but Treppe has to be capitalized. Kommst du hoch? Works as well. Yes. Kommst du hoch? Kommen sie rauf? In the formal way. Yes. Kommen sie rauf? Ja. Tschö, Christine. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Dir auch einen schönen Tag. Kommst du nach oben? Yes, also correct. Sehr schön. Sehr viele gute Antworten. Nummer 6. Um, where are you from? Like if I'm, I want to ask about your home country and I want to say in German, where are you from? How do you say that? Woher kommst du richtig? Woher kommst du? Oder wo kommst du her? Genau, sehr viele gute Antworten. Formal way, woher kommen sie? Super, perfekt, das war einfach. Das war sehr einfach. Okay, Nummer sieben. Ähm. When does the class start? When does the class start? Marlon, nicht ganz richtig. Ja, super minimal. Wann fängt der Unterricht an? Perfekt. Wann fängt der Unterricht an? Super. Ihr seid gut. Ihr seid sehr, sehr gut. Der Unterricht, ne? Wann fängt der Unterricht an? Super. Okay. Nummer 8. Moment, ich brauche ein gutes Beispiel. We had this at the beginning. She's training me. So let's say I am new at a company and someone is training me. Wie sagt man das? We talked about that today. Super. Sie arbeitet mich ein. Perfekt. Richtig. Sie arbeitet mich ein. Ja. Ihr habt gut. Nicht sie einarbeitet mich. You have to separate it. Sie arbeitet mich ein. Ne? Danke, Lukas. Sehr gut. Sie arbeitet mich ein. Super. Ja. Super, super. Trainiert. Sie trainiert mich would be like in sports. Like, let's say... Well, well, I dance, as a lot of you may know, I dance and I have a trainer and then I, I could say, sie trainiert mich, she's training me in that sport, ne? Genau. So, Nummer 9. Nummer 9. Um, when are we leaving? Wie sagt man das auf Deutsch? When are we leaving?
Ein, nicht an Apisco. Ein, sie arbeitet mich ein. Super, wann fahren wir los? Wann fahren wir ab? Is more in the sense of like, when is the train leaving, right? In that, like you're sitting in the, on the train and then you could say, wann fahren wir ab, ja. But you can also say, wann fahren wir los? Wann fahren wir los, genau. Wann gehen wir los is when are we going to start walking? So not in a vehicle. If you leave in a vehicle, you would have to say, wann fahren wir los? Genau. So, Nummer 10. Ähm, Moment. This is going to be a hard one. She got into the car. We talked about that as well today. She got into the car. Super, sie ist ins Auto eingestiegen oder sie ist in das Auto eingestiegen, genau. Auto has to be capitalized. Sie ist ins Auto eingestiegen, super, sehr schön. Sie steigt ins Auto, works as well, yes, but this is present tense, she's getting into the car. Genau, sie ist in das Auto eingestiegen, not sie hat, because it's a movement, sie ist in das Auto eingestiegen. Sie ist ins Auto eingestiegen, super. Okay, Nummer 11. Nummer 11. Mm. She fell down. We also talked about that today. What does that mean? She fell down. Let's see if you guys know how to do that or what that means. Sie ist runtergefallen. Yes, that means she was like standing, uh, I don't know, let's like on a height. Like, let's say um, she was standing on a ladder. Then you would say, sie ist runtergefallen. So she like fell a few meters down. Sie ist hingefallen would be she was just walking and then she fell down. So it matters how high you fall. <laughs> sie ist hingefallen. Sie ist runtergefallen. Yes. Sie ist hingefallen. Hingefallen, nicht hingefallen. Hingefallen, ne? Ja, sie ist hingefallen. Okay, a couple more. Nummer 12. Nummer 12. Um, I canceled the appointment. Ja, yeah, I fell from it. Ist runtergefallen, yes. I fell from it. Uh, I canceled the appointment. Das heißt das. Hm? Ja, ich habe den Termin abgesagt. Super, super, sehr gut. Ja, sehr gut. Ich sage den Termin ab, would be present tense, or you, you plan on doing something. I am canceling the appointment. Genau, ich habe den, nicht der, den Termin. Oder ich habe meinen Termin abgesagt, genau. Okay, äh, Nummer 13. Ähm... I am like I am taking a nap. I'm taking a nap now or literally I am lying down now. How do you say that? In German. Oh, we have a new um content creator by the way on the Lingoni German YouTube channel. Her name is Anna. And she talks about the different ways to say sleep. So make sure to watch that video. I think we uploaded it a few weeks ago. It's a, kind, it's a very fun video. And yeah, there are 
quite a few expressions for taking a nap and sleeping. And she explains those to you. So ma make sure to go check that out on our YouTube channel. You can say, ich mache ein Nickerchen. I am taking a nap. Yes. Ich lege mich jetzt hin. Perfekt. Ja. Ich mache jetzt ein Nickerchen oder ich lege mich jetzt hin. Perfekt. Super. Ja. Ich lege nicht. Ich liege. Ich lege. Oh, John Fran, I'm sure you watched Anna's video because she mentions that. Ich lege mich aufs Ohr. Super. Ja, genau. Okay. Two more. And then we're done for today. Nummer 14. Um, uh, let's say I'm downstairs and I'm someone is upstairs and I'm asking them to come down. And I would say, come down now. Come down now. Wie sagt man das auf Deutsch? Come down now. <laughs> yeah, komm sofort runter, come down immediately, come down right now, very demanding, komm jetzt, oder komm jetzt runter, genau, super, komm jetzt runter, perfect. Ja, yeah. ihr seid super, genau, und das letzte, das letzte Beispiel. Um, she didn't clean up her room, wie sagt man das auf Deutsch? She didn't clean up her room. She didn't clean up her room. Auf Deutsch. <laughs> Sie hat, well, clean up is more aufräumen. Sauber machen is like clean using water, right? Ja, sie hat ihr Zimmer nicht aufgeräumt. Oder sie hat nicht ihr Zimmer aufgeräumt. Ja, das geht auch. Genau. Super. Sehr gut, Leute. Toll gemacht. Ja, yeah. thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that was helpful. I, heard, I hope you learned some new stuff. Um, if all of this was too much for you... Yeah, remember that we have an app. It's on Lingoni.com. You can also try out our trial. It's uh, in the description below. And you guys, there's going to be a, another live stream Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it's Tuesday. Let me check. <laughs> With a very special guest. It's going to be on Wednesday, not on Tuesday. It's going to be on Wednesday on June 1st. It's going to be with Nika from uh, Verba. She's Ukrainian. She, she, she teaches Ukrainian and Russian. And she will be teaching me some Ukrainian. And I don't know any Ukrainian. I know a little tiny bit of Russian. But I don't know any Ukrainian. And she's going to be with me here live on YouTube on Wednesday at 5 p.m. German time. Um 17 Uhr. So make sure, and sure to tune in and um, support me. Because uh, I'm not sure how I will be doing. Uh, yeah. Because uh, I hope that... I will be able to learn at least a little bit. I'm sure it's going to be hard. I know that Russian is hard and I'm sure Ukrainian is also hard. So yeah, tune in on Wednesday at 5 p.m. to to watch that live stream. I'm really excited about it. Vielen Dank, dass ihr heute dabei wart. Someone is asking Milan, you're asking when are these live stream when are these live streams happening usually? Very fun and informative. So usually they are every second Sunday. And we already, we've already scheduled the next couple of live streams. So as I said, on Wednesday, there's going to be like a fun live stream with a guest. Her name is Nika. On the 12th, June 12th, there's going to be a live stream with me and Jacqueline, with me and my sister. And we're going to talk about basic German travel phrases. So if you're planning on coming to Germany and you need some travel phrases in German, then you should join that live stream. It's going to be on June 12th at 3 p.m. German time. Then... There's going to be a French-German collab live stream with me and Alicia from the Lingoni French YouTube channel. And it's going to be on Wednesday, June 22nd at 3 p.m. German time. It's going to stream on both the German and the, and the French channel. Then there's going to be another live stream with myself on June 26th at 3 p.m. German time. Maybe 1 p.m. I'm not sure yet about the time. But you'll always see the, the time um, on the YouTube channel. But it's usually it's at 3 p.m. German time on Sundays, every second Sunday. And then there's going to be another one on July 10th with me and Jacqueline. And we're going to 
teach you role plays in German and dialogues. Well, actually, we're going to be doing role playing, but we're going to teach you how to have a basic German conversation. We're going to give you a lot of feedback. So yeah, those are the live streams happening in June and July, and I'm really excited about all of them. I'm so glad that you guys are always so active in these live streams, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. Can you guys give me another grade between one, which is really, really lousy, and 10, which is really, really great? What did you think of today's live stream? Let me know. It was nice to um, talk to you guys again. <laughs> okay, 9, 10, 10, 8.5, 10, 8. Okay, I'm glad you guys are honest. That's good. I guess it was a lot of information today, right? I feel like I gave you a ton of information. But the thing is that separable verbs in German are always so complex and there's so much to teach. Yeah, but I think I covered quite a bit. Danke, ihr Lieben. Ihr wart toll. Vielen, vielen Dank. Wir sehen uns am Mittwoch. Danke, Karl. Wir sehen uns am Mittwoch mit Nika um 17 Uhr oder wir sehen uns am, ähm, ähm, was habe ich gesagt, 10. Juni? Ich habe schon wieder vergessen. Moment. Genau, also am Mittwoch um 17 Uhr mit Nika oder am 12. Juni mit Jacqueline um 15 Uhr. Ne? Genau. Vielen Dank, ihr Lieben. Wir sehen uns demnächst. Also, don't forget to check out our Reels on Instagram and we're on TikTok now. Lingoni is on TikTok, so we're basically everywhere and we're doing a lot of cool videos there as well. So, danke schön, ihr Lieben. Wir sehen uns im nächsten Livestream. Tschüss. <laughs> Tschüss, danke schön. Das ist lieb von dir, danke. Tschüss.